Holland, it's Victor. Give me a break, man. Give me a flake, man. This is a J News video in which I will present to you some recent Japanese news, not breaking news, not breaking news, just recent Japanese boot news, and uh, tell you the news, give you some information, uh, my opinions on it as a long-term resident of Japan, and I teach you some Japanese for those of you who are learning Japanese. Now, before we start today, I'd like to uh, first tell you that if you're interested in sumo, you really should not be watching this. You should be watching this channel. This is Jason's All Sumo channel. It is a great channel. It's um, it's quite popular. Uh, he's got it's got six million views, and all it does is sumo. All it does is he re-uploads sumo videos. He also talks about sumo a bit, um, and he's a really nice guy. I've met him a couple times in real life. Anyway, nice guy. <laughs> His name is Jason. And uh, if you're interested in, in sumo, he's a, he will answer all of your questions. Okay. Now, a little background for those of you who don't. Well, actually, where should I, where should I start? Someone accused me of um, burying the lead. So this is the lead. This is the lead. By the way, did you, by the way, did you know that uh, 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 burying the lead is spelled L-E-D-E? -E? I didn't know that. I always thought it was L-E-A-D, but it's apparently L-E-D-E. -E. You know, learn something every day. Uh, so... This is the actual news, all right? Let's get to the news first, which is, where is it? Here it is. Kise, yes. Kise no Sato has become the first Japanese sumo wrestler to reach the position of Yokozuna, which is the highest position of Yokozuna, of, of a sumo wrestler. He's become the 72nd, as you can tell by the link uh, to my, to my, well, actually, it's on my left here. I'm facing the screen. But anyway, you, you can see it. It's on the screen next to me. And uh, and it's a big deal because he's Japanese and we haven't had a Japanese uh, Yokozuna, which is, again, the top level, for 18, since 1998, I think. So like 18, 19 years. A long time. So everyone's ecstatic. Everyone's really happy. And there's a little, there's a little, um, there's kind of some fishy things about this story. So I want to get into that in a minute. But before we get into that, for those of you who don't know anything about sumo, I, I took some notes here. I want to give you some information. Sumo, by the way, is a really fun, fun, fun thing to do. If you ever get a chance, if you ever get a chance to come to Japan, I definitely would recommend it. I've been, I used to follow sumo uh, pretty closely back in the day, nine, uh, about 25 years ago when I first came over. It was a lot of fun. The days of Wakanohana, Takanohana, Konishiki, Akebono, all those guys. It was, it was just great. And if you knew who everyone was, um, you could, um, well, you would just enjoy it, right? It's just, oh, yeah, that's that guy and this guy. And, but um, even if you don't, going to the sumo bouts, the sumo tournaments, uh, and there are there are six formal uh, official tournaments a year. There are like there are like uh, what do you call them? Demonstrations and, and other things to help promote the sport. But there are six tournaments a year. Three of them are held in Tokyo, and three are the other three are held in Fukuoka, Osaka, and Nagoya, I believe. Now this information is uh, from memory, so I could be wrong. Check it yourself; it's not that important. Uh, the three in Tokyo, I think, are, are held in January, March, May, uh, September. And then the other ones are Osaka, maybe. Maybe Osaka's in March and Tokyo's in May. And then in July, I believe, in Nagoya, where I live. I've been lucky enough to go to those. And then the other one uh, is in Fukuoka. And I forget when, but maybe November. Anyway, whatever. But the, the point is, they're all over Japan, and if you're if you're coming to Tokyo, you have the best chance of seeing it there, probably. Now, ticket prices are anywhere from twenty six to one hundred twenty dollars, depending on where you sit. If you if you sit way in the back in the bleachers, those are fun too, because all the people back there are really friendly, and they'll like people are really friendly, especially friendly to foreigners. And there, many times I've been sitting there in the back, and people just hand me liquor, and say, "Hey, have a drink and eat, eat my food," and they will chat with me. And they're just happy to, you know, everyone's having a good time. The atmosphere is very welcoming. Uh, they are bleacher seats, so it's hard to see. Uh, so if you're going to take pictures, of course, bring, bring, bring a um, telephoto lens or bring your binoculars if you want to watch. Uh, if you want to sit up at the front seats, you have to buy, I believe, the whole, there's like a box seat so you can sit, where well, you sit on the floor on tatami. But they're kind of elevated. Uh, you can see from videos, just uh, look. But there, you have to buy the whole, usually you have to buy all four seats which means like $500 and per person it comes to about 120 bucks each. But that's also a lot of fun. I've also been lucky enough to sit in those. I'll tell you a funny story about a few years ago when, when um, uh, there was a scandal in which some sumo wrestlers or some of the sumo association was, um, uh, what do we say? Hanging out with Yaku Yakuza. They were, what's the word? Fraternizing with Yakuza. 
And there was a big scandal because they found some Yakuza in the front rows. They would, the people saw it on TV like, hey, isn't that that, you know, Godfather guy? And as a, as a result, um, it became, if you, if, you, if, if you were, well, how do I say this? Okay, I had a student who for some reason did not want to be seen there anymore. So he gave me his tickets and he was a big kind of dangerous looking fellow, very, very um, wealthy person. But he gave me his ticket, so I was lucky enough to go. So I called a couple, a couple people, and we all went. Um, and it was great. I had a great, had a great time. Uh, so if you get a chance, definitely go. If you go, if you get the box seats, you get a free lunch. Not a free, it's not, nothing's free, right? You, you, no free lunch, but but you get food. Uh, food comes with it. If you get the box seats, uh, the seats at the back, uh, you get nothing. Uh, the festivities, or the, the bouts start from early in the morning. I believe the first ones are like, I don't know, 9 or 10 a.m. And, but the good ones are about one or two. Uh, the, 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 the really big hitters, uh, literally big hitters, come out a little bit later. So, um, so anyway, so if you, know, if you want to make a whole day of it, you can, but there's really no... Usually, usually it's, it's the, the best stuff happens uh, afternoon uh, or even one or two or three o'clock. But uh, anyway, um, oh, here we go. Here's the information. Yeah, six grand, two more tournaments a year, three in Tokyo, January, May, and September. I was right. One in Osaka, March. Uh, I was right. Yeah, July. Wow. Well, what do you know? There you go. The information will all be in the description too. People ask a lot about the base salaries. The the um the bottom wrestlers get nothing. They're basically slaves to the other sumo wrestlers, and they have to clean up after their sh clean up after them, and and it's it's just a horrible horrible existence until you get into the higher ranks, and then you get some decent salaries. The, the Yokozuna gets, as you can see here, $23,000 a month, which is about a teacher salary so per month. So it's pretty good. Anyway, there have been some uh, scandals in the past of Yao Cho. There's a wonderful book about statistics, and the name escapes me now, but there's a book about statistics that, that um, pretty much proves that match fixing must have happened. And there's actually been a few cases of match fixing, um, which is to the dismay of Sumo, because, of course, they're all... Uh, very proud of being honorable and noble and honest people. There's also been scandals of hazing, which, oh, by, by the way, let me show you here. Uh, yeah, you don't need that. Uh, Yaocho is max uh, match fixing and hazing is ijime. Basically, ijime is also bullying, but that's basically what it is, okay? Another thing about sumo that's interesting to many people is that there are no women allowed in sumo at all. You have seen, you'll see pictures of women doing sumo but that's like in other countries and stuff or maybe in japan but you know of course wearing clothes you're not going to be flopping around topless if you're a woman and i guess if, if the and when i say flopping i don't mean actually boobs flopping i mean fat because even men we i mean men not me particularly but <laughs> men flop because they're so big and so much meat you know blah, blah, blah. anyway that's not the actual sound that's a that's a simulated sound by the way so women are not allowed in the sport and to the extent check this out uh, yeah, this is Jason's channel. Check out that channel. I'll put that link in the description. Women are not allowed in the dohyo. Dohyo. And this is the ring here. As you can see, this ring, this is the where they wrestle. And this is called the dohyo. And it's, it's very sacred. And when they build it, some Shinto guy comes there and he blesses it. And no women are allowed. And there have been cases like that. Usually, the mayor of the city will like open the ceremonies on the first day. Um, or maybe previous to the first day, but he will, he or he will, he, I'm sorry, I almost said he or she, but he will come and take part in the ceremony. Now, there was a case, I don't remember, I want to say Fukuoka, but it wasn't Nagoya, but there was a case in which a woman was uh, supposed to do it. But the sumo people said, no, 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 a woman cannot touch in there. And there was even a case of some crazy woman who tried to like, jump in there and they, they tackled her. So it's, you know, there's feminism happening in Japan, not to the extent of uh, the Women's March etc that happens in america but but it does happen here there are there are feminists here anyway uh in that respect uh you know it's from a western point of view we can argue is is it a sexist sport for that reason alone yeah i guess so you know but um i mean it's something that they wouldn't even consider sexist no it's just you just women don't do that women cannot be in the sumo ring okay no sumo wrestlers are quite infamous for being quite um uh, free <laughs> with their sexual favors they're, they're they're known to be playboys okay and it's not a bad thing uh yeah they're studs okay uh, believe it or not this is a uh, old as you can see sumo wrestling sumo wrestling has been around forever uh it's depicted way back uh how many tens of, i don't know hundreds of years ago but this is called a rikishi rikishi rikisha 
Dikishi and Riki, of course, means strength. And you probably know the word rickshaw, and that comes from the same kanji, Riki, Riki. Riki so Riki is uh, using your strength to do something. Sha, by the way, wheel, but in this call, Riki, she, she is a person, strength person, literally, I suppose. Uh, there, there they are, Riki, she. They are huge people. The biggest one in history is a, it was uh, Konishiki, which was a Hawaiian. And he was, uh, he was um, trying to be Yokozuna. Uh, he was, everyone thought he would be Yokozuna back in the day. There was a, there was a situation where in, uh, back in the day when the New York Times called him at his home. I think it, he was on vacation in Hawaii or something, and someone picked up the phone, and you know the the, the initial reports were Konishki was saying that they didn't they don't uh, they didn't allow me to become Yokozuna because I'm a foreigner, and there were uh, accusations of uh, racism, you know, because you know they, they in those days there had not been any foreign uh, um, Yokozuna yet. I believe the first one was Musashi Maru, or maybe it was Akebono. I don't quite remember, but but soon after that, soon after Kurishiki never made it to to uh, to Yokozuna, but he was the biggest one in history, and you often see pictures of him. He's I'm sure you can find a really cool pictures of uh, Kurishiki. He, by the way, has become a singer, and he appears now on Japanese TV, and he's one of the few sumo wrestlers that has rekept his name. It was it was hard to do. Usually, you don't you get you don't get to keep your name. He has kept his name. This is the. These are some of the famous pictures you see of Konishiki. Uh, huge, right? Anyway, <laughs> but uh, he's kept his uh, name. He's cut his hair. You have to cut off the the chonmage at the top there. There, there's a special ceremony when you retire from the sumo world and you lose your name. But there, I guess I don't think that everyone loses their name. But most people, most people are not allowed to keep their name. All right. Here's another famous picture of um, Konishiki. Just to, just to show you this, because I'm sure you've seen these before somewhere. That's a Getty image, so I shouldn't be showing you that. Anyway, uh, you can Google all this. It's funny how you can I can you can Google it, but I can't show it to you here. Anywho, uh, that, so yeah, so so the funny thing is that after Konishiki be, did not become a, a yokozuna, quite a few others became yokozuna, quite a few, few other foreigners, and after that, it was basically dominated by foreigners. In fact, there were no more Japanese yokozuna at all until Wednesday of this week, in which finally, should we go back to uh, there it is. Not this oh, yes, yes, yes. This is, we're going to get to that in a minute. Kisen Osato became the 72nd Yokozuna. Now, usually to become a Yokozuna, you have to win two tournaments. Now, there's a tournament consists of 15 days of bouts. <coughs> and it's basically elimination. You you fight somebody, and if you win, you go on to fight someone else who has also won. And you basically, it's, it's an elimination round of 15 days. And usually you become a Yokozuna when you have won two of these tournaments. Now, Kisen Osato has not won two. So some people say, ah, oh, they just, you know, jumped the gun and gave it to him because he's Japanese and he's pretty good, he's good enough, and they just wanted to give it to a Japanese person, which you could argue. But uh, in his defense, Kisa Nasato is also has the best score, the, the, the highest number of wins in, 26, in 2016, uh, which, means, which is strange. So he, won, he did not win any tournament, but he, he accumulated the most number of wins, uh, you know, bouts for the whole year. So that is impressive. So I guess that is a good enough reason to uh, to name him Yokozuna. Um, now I was sent this. Uh, now uh, again, there are links in the description to this. I was sent this uh, story by one of my subscribers who actually initially wanted me to to translate this six minute video. He goes, "Could you please translate this in English?" And it's mumbling. I can barely understand it. And even if you watch. Uh, even J Japanese people are like, I can't hear what he's saying. He's just mumbling. Uh, and a lot of, when you come to Japan, speaking with men, and this is about as manly manly and macho as you can get, they mumble a lot and they speak in kind of man's English and you can't really hear. And also, it's just a bad, it's a bad recording. So this, uh, this interview is just, it's hard to hear. However, there is a little, there's a shorter, much shorter um, interview later. And they even su supply subtitles. So even regular Japanese people have trouble hearing. So they su su supply subtitles. But I will, um, yeah, I will go through this. Now, before I get into that, I want to mention one more uh, interesting point, which is that if you read the English articles and the Japanese articles, there is no mention of a character, a character, a Mongolian Yokozuna who retired a few years ago named Asa Shoryu. And it's a really fascinating story. So I'm going to link you to his uh, Wikipedia page, wherever the hell that is. I have it somewhere. I'll just close these other pictures. You can Google that information later if you want. Um, 
Where is it? Yeah, well, it's it's here somewhere. But uh, Asa Shorty was a Mongolian who did wonderfully. He was one of the best. He, I think he started out. Yeah, there he is. He started out in, uh, in I want to say, at about the same time that Waka no Hana was retiring. Uh, so kind of out with the old and in with the new. And he was just amazing. Everyone thought he's going to beat everybody's uh, record. He's about six foot one. Oh, six foot it says here, but... Uh, and he was just doing great, but he's Mongolian, and he had a bit of a temper on him, and he also suffered a little bit from the pressure of being, uh, well, you know, his, his personality didn't quite fit. There were quite a few scandals. He punched uh, a restaurant uh, uh, employee once. I think that's when he had actually ended up retiring. But there were also accusations of him throwing matches because he did so well, and he sued uh, one of the newspapers that accused him of it or the media outlet that, that accused him of throwing matches, and he won. And to this day, I believe it's the highest uh, defamation suit ever won uh, in Japanese history. I think he won like something like $400,000, which may not seem a lot to you, but in Japan, like nobody wins any money for stuff like that. Uh, it, it's not like in the States where you meant, like I saw in the, in, in the newspaper the other day on Yahoo, I don't know why I watch that, I look at Yahoo, but some uh, high school girl, I believe, or college girl, was awarded one point something two million dollars because she was forced to take a pee in a bucket because they didn't want to give her a bathroom break. So that is unheard of in Japan. That never happens. Uh, even deaths, uh, they get two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. There's nothing like million dollar awards here. Uh, so for a defamation suit, that's amazing, four hundred thousand uh, dollars. But anyway, as I showed you, the reason I'm mentioning him is because if you read articles about Kisen Osato, who, which, which uh, they mention all the previous sumo wrestlers up to now, they skip over Asa Shoryu completely, which is really weird because he was he dominated the sport until until he retired, and then Hakuho pretty much took over, and he's been dominating the sport uh, since then. Hakuho is another Mongolian, uh, so right as of as of now, Kisen Osato is the only Japanese yokozuna. So, so it's a pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting, po po I guess, politics in there. So even this Japan Today article doesn't even mention that guy. But um, anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that is basically a story. It's interesting. So um, is sumo, is the sumo world racist? Uh, is it sexist? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> there's also another rule. Uh, the sumo, the way sumo works is if you want to be a sumo wrestler, you have to join a stable. And I guess they have to recruit you or they accept you into a stable uh, if they think you're good enough. And they train you there. Um, but I believe uh, you cannot have more than one or two maybe foreigners in each stable. I don't remember. Jason, I'm sure Jason also knows that, those specifics. But it's limited. The point is limited. And that's very similar in, Amer in Japanese baseball as well. I think on, in American baseball, uh, Japanese baseball team, you can't have more than two foreigners playing. Maybe it's even one. I don't remember. But again, it's limited. They don't want foreigners taking over the whole thing. Uh, that's kind of a weird, um, a weird rule. I don't think you would see that in the USA where I'm from. But anyway, that's basically it. Let, let me know if you have any thoughts about that. For those of you studying Japanese, stick around. And I'm going to give you notes, which uh, notes are in the description, but I will go through that as well with you. The first one we're going to talk about is this, uh, just the headline, because although this is an impossible video to listen to and hear, I mean, well, we, we could, but it would just take forever. It's so hard, and we'd have to get another Japanese person, and I mean a real Japanese person. I'm not, I'm a fake Japanese person, to come in here and uh, listen to it, and even they, I'm sure, would have trouble, but anyway, the first, uh, where is it, the first, the first, the headline, we're just going to go, we're just going to do, oh, yeah, 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 one more thing, Asa Shoryu, I meant this, I'll put this in the description, Asa Shoryu, fighting Musashi Maru, oh, yeah, about, about, about Jason's channel, I'm sorry, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he, uh, he uploads, he has told me, and I've done it too, if you go to a sumo bout and you videotape yourself, you can upload those videos. And I've done that, and it's legal, which is weird. I don't understand. But there's a really shitty um, copy on YouTube of the Asa Shoryu Musashi Maru uh, video. And you might, and Musashi Maru, the, the, the Yokozuna, the Gaijin Yokozuna wins, but he's got 200 pounds on the Mongolian. I mean, they're both foreigners, of course, but but although he wins, he's got, he's outweighs him by 200 pounds, which is amazing. I mean, that's like me beating a baby, you know? Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't be surprised I, I beat the baby, but I, let's assume the baby put up a fight, okay? <laughs> like, the baby almost beat me. You'd be impressed, right? That's basically what happened. Okay, that's not a very good analogy, but it, would, that would be, it's, it is funny, the thought of me wrestling a baby. Okay, uh, so let's look at this first one, which is, Nana ju, na, yeah, Nana ju ni 
die with 70 seconds. And now you need die. And let me see if I can. Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure I put notes up here somewhere. Where is it? Da, 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 da. Where, where did I put that? Oh, maybe it's not here. Oh, no. Did I really not do that after all this preparation? These videos, I want to put these videos out faster, but. Um, Oh, I don't think I, I, for somehow I must have erased it. I did, I did do that. Ah, how does that happen? Just a second. Well, I think I can wing it. I'm pretty sure I can wing it. So let's just, let's, what does this say? Let's just, uh, let's just wing it. Okay. So this, here's the headline and it says, Nanaju Nidai Yokozuna. Okay. That's the 72nd Yokozuna. Uh, kise no, kise no, kise no sato. That's his name. Ga Tanjo. It's his birth. The birth. Tanjobi is birthday. So this is, he has been birthed. So the birth of him. And this is Yorukobi. Yorukobi no Kaiken. Yorukobi means happiness. And Kaiken is interview or meeting. So basically this is just his happiness meeting because he became Yokozuna. He became the 72nd Yokozuna. That's all it is. All right. Now that's one. The other one, which I, I'm sure I have notes on here. We're going to talk about here is da, 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 yes okay something that he says what's the kise no sato yes this is the headline here and this is a tough one okay so this is something I've never heard before but it's interesting it says kise no sato na ni haji nu yo shoujin okay <laughs> and what that means is Kisuno Sato spoke. Whenever you see these strange brackets, it means it's a quotation mark. And he is saying, I will do my best not to bring shame to the name. Now, I want to point out something. You might be saying, is it named Namae? That's true. Uh, but in, um, you see, this is Kimi no Nawa. Can you guys see that? Kimi no Nawa. This is a famous anime. And Na is name. So your name is, basically this, is, this literally says, and your name is? So na is a formal way to say name, na, instead of namae. So, kise no sato, na ni, haji is, uh, haji has, uh, is shame. Haji shinu, I will not bring shame. Haji shinu yo, shoujin, I will exert myself, okay? And then the last part of this, it says, yokozuna shoshin, dentatsu shiki. Is that right? Dentatsu shiki. So, what dentatsu is basically to announce something, a formal announcement. And shiki is a ceremony. So this is something that's only, they only do in Japan. It's, he's already been, he's already become Yokozuna. So this is just a formal uh, ceremony where they announce that he's actually Yokozuna. And his quote there is, I will do my best not to bring shame to the name. Okay. And something they often do here is you can see they got a big old fish Right, he often holds a fish, and you can see the kanji there. It says Yokozuna no Nani Hajishi Haji Nuyo. I will do my best not to bring uh, shame to the name. Okay, and a little bit later in there, uh, let's see. Yokozuna Shoshin ga Dentatsu Sarimashita. Dentatsu is to be announced. Sarimashita is a passive tense. He was uh, announced. It was announced that he became. He was promoted. Shoshin promoted to. Not to be, not to be confused with Shojin, which is ex exert yourself. To um, Yokozuna. Uh, let's see. Tsu -tsu. Oh, yeah, this is what he actually says. Tsusunde shinde o uke itashimasu. Uh, oh, I forgot what that means. It's very formal. Let's see. What is this? No, it says, uh, notice all the microphones there. This. Okay, so notice how quickly, so you can barely hear him, right? So, where is it? Okay. Uh, yeah, we have some notes. We're already on 24 minutes. I think I've gone a bit over here. I'll tell you what. Uh, the rest of the video is kind of a, it's it's kind of painful to do the listening to. So, so if you're interested in that, I got links in the description. Uh, go ahead and check those out. Let's see. There's a question and answer when they say what. Oh yeah, here's some. Here's something I do want to. I do want to point out because it's useful. Dentatsu shiki wo oete shinkyo wa. So shinkyo wa means what is your opinion? What do you think of? Uh, how do you feel now that the the announcement of your formally becoming yokozuna is over? The the announcement ceremony is over. And he says yori so kiga hiki shimarimashita. 
hikishimarimashita, which means basically I felt more like tight uh, pressure in my chest than I expected it would be. So yoruiso kiga kiga hiki hiki hikishimarimas is uh, yeah kind of a feeling of not anxiety but um, uh, ha I want to say happy anxiousness. It's just I got this tight feeling in it, but it's in a good way. It's a positive way. And shinkyo is your mental state. So when you ask someone shinkyo wa, shinkyo wa, it means what's your mental state or what do you think about that, right? Uh, his answer later, you'll see in the video, is Motomoto ningen teki ni seicho shite. I have grown more and more as a human being. Ningen teki ni is hum, human, it's an adjective for human. Seicho is to grow. Motomoto is more. So Motomoto more humanly, in a way, in a human way, I have grown. I want to become a yokozuna that will be revered or honored or respected. Okay, that's basically the the uh, the vocabulary and the the, the general message there. Uh, but anyway, that's your lesson for today. Thanks for watching these long ass JNews videos. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, thanks always for your support. Uh, these videos, of course, do not get a lot of views, but I do. If you do get something out of it, do me a favor and just give me a thumbs up. And just uh, leave any kind of comment down there, like, I don't know, whatever, whatever. Anything at all helps, I guess, you know. I don't know. But, thanks, you know, if you got to the end, I guess that's enough. That's enough. I do appreciate your, your interest in my videos. And I'll try to be uh, back. I'm trying to make more of these, but, you know, they take a lot of effort sometimes. And this week I was pretty busy making uh, tests. I'm actually teaching a class of uh, very high-level uh, teachers, who Japanese people who teach English to uh, their students. And I've got to make sure they're trying to improve their English, too. Because, because, you know, a language uh, learning just never ends. It's never over. So you got to keep at it. Anyway, that's your lesson. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys soon.